There is an old lady, great hair, old enough to be like your grandmother, sitting with you, with you, in a lecture room filled with youths. And she's fiercely scribbling in her notebook and craning forward to hear a little better what the lecturer is saying. Isn't it a little unusual? Or is it an encouraging sight? Someone of this seniority with the thirst for knowledge, that lifelong learning attitude. If I was sitting beside her, I would be very motivated to study a lot harder. Ladies and gentlemen, this old lady is Helen Small. Helen Small, she gave up her college pursuits in her 20s to become a wife, to become a mother. But she decided to go back to university at the grand age of 87. And not only did she complete her undergraduate degree, she went on to receive her master's in psychology. After that, she authored her own book, Why Not? My 70-year plan for a college degree. And indeed, why not? And these two words, Sorry, and these two words have played a really important role in my own academic life. Like Helen Small, I have come back to university to complete on something that's of great interest and of great importance to me. But unlike Helen Small, I'm not 87. I am 32. Currently, I am studying at the University of Wollongong, pursuing my Bachelor's of Science in Psychology. Unfortunately, I have forgotten my lines. <laughs> I might just have the brain of an 87 year old right now. <laughs> but coming back to school is again something of real importance to me. And it hasn't been a really easy journey. It hasn't been straightforward. It hasn't been direct. So today I wanted to share with you three things that has been stopping me from pursuing my interest in psychology for the past perhaps 20 years. And I'd like to invite you, the audience, to also think about the things that you haven't done, that you have always been wanting to do, that you have been stopped by, and to ask, why not? So the first thing that stopped me in my life was my past. And two things specifically helped me back. One was something that my brother told me when I was in my teenage years. And the second thing was the notion that life was good. I remember the first time I picked up a psychology textbook in my secondary school. It was blue colored. And I was so fascinated by the contents. I was reading it, and I was like, wow, what is this? And then, my brother walked by, and this is what he said. Hey, don't read that book lah. Cannot make money in psychology one. To a young, impressionable boy, the words of my brother, who was five years my senior, had a very strong weight. And it, and it indelibly impacted my decision-making process as to what I would study later on, which was in political science. After that, I went on to work in a government agency for four years. It was a great job. It was a cushy job. Good pay. But that was the second thing that stopped me. By that age of 28, I had accomplished so much. My degree was earned with blood and sweat. My job, again, was fantastic. Life was good, so why rock the boat? You see, since the day when I picked up that psychological textbook, my interest in psychology had not waned one bit. In fact, it grew stronger and stronger over the years. Whenever I had free time, I just start lapping up psychological-related literature. Books by Daniel Goleman, Robert Greene, um, Malcolm Gladwell. I love them all. The topic was fascinating. 
interesting, enlightening, the signs of human thought and behavior. However, then, on one hand, I was thinking, hmm, life was good. But on the other hand, there was a niggling, gnawing feeling coming from the abyss called unfulfilled desire. Something was still missing in my life. So I thought, why not? And I made a jump. The second thing that stopped me in my pursuit and in my interest was something that we all have, our age. For me, my age is not just a number. We put stories, meaning, significance to our age. At 28, there were norms, there were expectations. I was thinking, you know, I'm 28. Why should I go back to university? I'll be talking to people 10 years my junior. I'd be like my age. I would be like, hmm, what will my parents say? What will my friends say? I'd be losing out. I, I'd be lagging behind. I was thinking, I've had my chance. Why should I try it again? Well, it was until I met another lady, not Helen Small, but her name was Aida. She was a 37-year-old chemistry teacher who in our group declared that she was going to be a doctor. Do you know how difficult it is to be a doctor here in Singapore? So I, fortunately, had the privilege of walking with her through her journey, week after week, having seen her overcome her struggles and her challenges. And I'm happy to say she's right now in Columbia University in the United States wow. as a pre-medical student. So when I shared with her those thoughts, those age-related thoughts, she said, hey, I also have them, eh? But don't you think they are constraining, limiting? I believe that I am much bigger than my thoughts. So when she said those words, I was struck. And then I said, why not? And I jumped. The third thing that stopped me was the uncertainty of it all. I knew that my interest in and the reality of psychology are two very different things. There were so many questions in my head. You know, they were like, what if I don't like studying psychology after all. What if psychology didn't fit my personality after all? Could I really take the chance when I don't know what are the risks? So I could go on and on entertaining these questions on days on end, you know. But I decided that some action needed to be taken. Small actions. You know, like research. So I did that. Research. I started interviewing my friends in the psychological field. I started dropping numerous inquiries with schools who offered psychological programs. I even decided to take a part-time course. While I studied in the day, I studied at night. Not one, well, not two, but three diplomas. Not easy and really, really tiring. So, Two years passed, and I thought, okay, I think I've gotten enough of a few, what, what's happening? So I asked myself, is it time? And I said, why not? So I took the jump and decided to change from working full-time to studying full-time. And three semesters have passed, and I must say, it hasn't been easy on me at the age of 32 but it has been fulfilling and amazing. I've taken on university life with a very different level of gusto, seizing all those opportunities that I never had, like volunteering as a peer mentor, and especially tonight, the significance of it for me is in completing Project 10, something I started when I was 23, but I've decided to finish at 32. So if I could turn back time or travel back time and talk to myself, <laughs> I would say three things to myself. One, 
H is just a number. Two, the past, let it be in the past. And three, when in doubt, take actions. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to leave you with this quote by George Bernard Shaw and invite you to think. What are the things that you haven't yet done and ask yourself, why not? Thank you.